Like, let's get a boys. Let's get a boys. Like no, no, no. You're, I'm the guy in the front. Like, it is what it is. Yeah. If I get shot first. Uh. <laughs> What's up, everyone? How's it going? My name is Daniel Francis, and welcome to The Real Talk with Daniel Francis. I got my good buddy, Mr. Andrew Kasperis, here. And uh, before we kind of get into uh, this episode specifically, I'd like to give some context of kind of what this podcast is about. Uh, if you know anything about myself, I work with people who struggle um, articulating their words, articulating the message that they want to give, public speaking, uh, becoming more fluent with their words. And one of the biggest things I've realized is with speech, it's not about having, you know, being this perfect speaker or being someone who doesn't say uhs or ums or stutter. Um, but really, it's about just being that authentic, that real, that, that, that genuine version of you. And even though you mess up, and I'll probably mess up, I'll probably embarrass myself at times on this episode. Um, the point of it is just to be just truly authentic and, and real. So what I want you to see from these episodes moving forward is uh, to see just a genuine conversation with a good buddy of mine for today and many more. And uh, yeah, just, just want to give you that uh, update. So. With that being said, let me introduce my uh, my guest, my good friend, Mr. Andrew. I, I feel like we should handshake. Hello, brother. What's up? Um, got that? That's the uh, that's the double uh, hand. The double hand, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Andrew's been a good friend of mine uh, for about what eight years now. Yeah, eight nine years. And um, you know, if we look back at our relationship, our beautiful relationship that we've had, um, um, you know, we met back in uh, you know uh, I was about twenty. You were about, what, 18? Yeah, 18 years old. And uh, it was so funny. You know, back in the day, I, I, I joined, what would you call it, a network marketing company? Yep. A multi-level marketing company? MLM, network marketing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We don't One of those that. pyramid we things. Don't say that. We don't say yeah. the pyramid scheme thing. But um, um, I was running a event at my house, and Andrew was invited by one of his friends to come out to a business opportunity. I thought it was a business opportunity. <laughs> it ended up being a basement, so... <laughs> And um, it ended, uh, <laughs> we, we have other people in the room here that have been in my basement. <laughs> and um, Andrew was inspired, joined. He had his credit card in the air saying, please sign me up. That was the easiest sale that you could ever ever imagine. He was sure. definitely a lay down. Yeah. And um, you know, he, he joined that day and what I realized is with time, um, he was as ambitious, I would say, as committed as me. Um, and I saw that in his eyes and ever since that day, you know, kind of our friendship has gone through that and we obviously you hit like the gold rank, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever that means. Yeah. I hit platinum, <laughs> whatever that means. Yeah. And then we went to our next journey, which was, um, I, I say we have a lot of parallels in our life. Thousand percent. And, uh, then we went to our door to door phase and, you know, I've probably knocked on, let's say about a hundred thousand doors. Which is actually crazy to <laughs> think about sheer volume of people you're engaging with. Like I've, I've guaranteed I've had to be in at least 10,000 homes. Yeah. Guaranteed at least 10,000 homes. Yeah. And we both kind of went through that. You know, um, you made six figures at like, what, 21? Yeah, 20, 21. And, you know, I, I kind of hit that around 23 and it was like this wow moment. And it was like, we're both like, what, college dropouts, university dropouts? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We made our parents proud. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then we became directors after that, where you looked over the Grant Cardone Canada uh, location, and then yeah. I looked over uh, the Coach Cooperation in, uh, in Ontario. And uh, we both became directors. And I think this next level that we're both at right now is we're both, I would like to say, business owners, yeah. business operators. And uh, I don't know if you want to add to that, but that's... Uh, Thousand percent. Pretty cool. Yeah, and it's just crazy the whole uh, like parallel lives type thing. Like we've both just seen each other go through such different stages. Like early on in the network marketing days was more about like we were so early on and so easily influenced, I would say, by everything we saw. Everything. Like people we looked up to, things we saw online, um, and just going through like all these different phases together. It's been cool to just see like hey, if I'm going through this, he probably has too. Mm -hmm. And I think just your whole idea with this podcast, like the real talk, yeah. it gives you that insight to have those conversations yeah. and then just allow cameras to, because we have these conversations all the time. All the time. It's just, it's just sometimes a little bit too much. <laughs> that calls me every day. But it's just like... And he picks up. I do. <laughs> it's having those, those conversations on camera and just, it's like a fly on the wall, having that perspective into, I guess, some of the things that we've learned along the way. Yeah. Because uh, I would confidently say we've both done fairly well for ourselves. Obviously, there's still yeah. a ton to go, but 
Yeah. It's having that like fly on the wall and have, having access to the conversation. I think. Well, cool. if we look at our, our journey, like we were basically like what you were saying, two naive kids. <laughs> yeah. <very. laughs> like we were two naive very. kids. Yeah. We were literally, you know, um, you know, as your dad would say, <laughs> pipe dreams. We believed in the pipe dream. That, that's it, man. Like <laughs> I signed, I signed up at that event. I was the easiest sale in the world. Had my credit card. And then came home, and then my family's like, "You signed up for a pyramid scheme?" Like, you know, and I'm like, "No, no, it's not. It's not one of those things." And it's just, I almost feel like this is interesting to get into, but I feel like early on having a bit of that naive, naive is actually yeah. beneficial to a degree. Yeah. We weren't like idiots, where it's like anything anybody says, but we were heavily influenced by what we thought were the right people. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, honestly, on paper. At 21 years old, we were, or even 20 years old, we were the, um, I'd want to say for myself, I was the idiot. Like, I was the dropout. Like, yeah. I, say that, I say that in a way of, like, on paper. Okay. I was, like, I was, I was, I was the black sheep. Mm. I, was the, I was in neuroscience. I, was, I told my whole family, I'm going to become a doctor. Like, you know, and yeah. I remember, like, my grandfather calling all of Italy, letting them all know. Yeah. You know, like, there was that path for me. And then what I did is I went down this this path that I think no one really goes down because it's it sounds like it's a losing opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I um, so I'm not saying I was an idiot, but at the time it was like, what are you doing? Like this isn't you shouldn't be doing something like that. And if yeah. if you're a viewer too, and it's like you are either an entrepreneur or you're a salesperson or you're going down a path where it's difficult, like. I think that's what this this episode or this podcast is like about is to show you guys like I have eight years of experience in this realm, dude. Yeah. Like it's crazy thinking about it. Like I could not imagine going back to who I was before, mm -hmm. like or going back to like getting something basic or yeah. You know, it's just like I'm. I'm. It's I literally. If everyone's going this way, I'm literally going the the other way. But yeah, having that naiveness at at that age, and I feel like. Now I'm at a position where I inspire people and mm -hmm. humbly, of course, but it's like, I think, um, it's almost like a Drake. Like it's like, I get it. Well, what was his first <laughs> video that he came out with? There was a, a music video of him with glasses. Like best I ever had There's, probably. No, before no? that it know. was, uh, there was like a, a picture of like, uh, the world map and it was, and he's, he's just a kid mm -hmm. and he's probably like 19, 20. And it's like, you're on Degrassi, dude. Like, what are you doing? Like you like him switching you, switching worlds? Yeah, like, why yeah. would you do this? Yeah. This is how we know you. You're the childhood actor. Mm. And then he's like, no, 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 I'm going to become a rapper. Yeah. Ha, 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 a rapper. You know, and now Drake is one of the biggest things in the world right now. It's like a household name. Yeah. It's like, like Coca-Cola type level. It's, it's almost ridiculous. Yeah. And I understand that because a lot of people doubt. And then it's like, you almost go kind of crazy. A thousand percent. Like, you almost like, you're like, am I crazy? Well, when you, when you start, I feel like when you start going down the, the path that isn't, like that most people don't go down, and the thing, you start doing things that are different from everybody around you, you, you do get that. And I've definitely felt that like isolation almost, where it's like, you start having those thoughts of, am I crazy, like, is this gonna work? Am I crazy? That's why I was saying to like go full circle on the naive thing. I feel like in the beginning, it's important to have that, because when you're a bit naive, even when you have those thoughts, it's like, no, 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 I'm going to make it work. Other people are making it work. Because I feel like early out, if we would have failed immensely at the network marketing opportunity, it's like, who knows what would have, like, maybe we would have went back into school, you know? And then these little decisions make such a substantial impact. Well, on I mean, go. on paper, we kind of did fail. <laughs> you know, to, like, to a degree, yeah. Like, like what? <laughs> we broke what was, we like, broke what, was, what was your biggest month? Uh, like $1,400. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. Uh, full time. Was yeah, full -time. and I was bragging about it too, you know. It's like we made $1,400 this month. Wow. Residual. Wow, residual. residual. Like, no. like, like on paper, we did fail. Yeah. You know, like we, we didn't have much. Yeah. Dude, I got a car. I got, a, I got my dad to co-sign on a BMW because the company said that they would pay $400 a month for this BMW. Yeah. So I hit the rank of diamond and I go, okay, dad, like I'm getting pissed off my dad. Dad, we'll get the car now. Yeah. And I'm a 19-year-old I'm, I'm a kid. Yeah. And all it was was a rank. Yeah. And then the team was like, hey, so you're going to you know, you get, get the car now? 
Yeah. And then I, I literally went to the dealership. I signed my name for a thirty thousand dollar car, BMW, and I had like a GPS system. So I'm like, that's what I want. It's advanced. This is how I'm advanced. Yeah. And um, I remember my dad's co-signing, and he's like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. Fuck. And then sold him on that. For and sure. then I kept the rank for four or five months, and then uh, you know they didn't pay for the car. Anymore. Well, it's it's a business, right? At the end of the day, if you're not bringing in the revenue, no. How are they going to keep paying you? But I wouldn't say it was a failure. I'd say it was a learning for sure. opportunity that launched us into, again, the people we met yeah. helped launch us into the next thing, yeah. getting into door to door. Sure. That, like, if you would have stayed in school yeah. and never experienced network marketing, would you have ever gone into door to door? Yeah, but what I'm saying is the accountant would have looked on paper and been like, you're an idiot. You broke even though, but I get what you're saying. But that's what I yeah. mean. I'm full yeah. time. Yeah. And I'm breaking even. You're making less than minimum wage. Less. I'm percent. making less yeah. than minimum wage. I'm full time and I have a BMW. Like, <laughs> like, like literally on paper, yeah. I'm a failure. But yeah. what I'm saying is we've literally, if you want to say brainwash ourselves to like look at the positives and everything. Early on, especially. Like we yeah. bought into that of like, yeah. no, 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 this is, this is meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're about to get to the next level. And I, I, we still talk like that to this day. Like, man, we're just getting started. Yeah. I, and I <laughs> I've said like, that line at least 150 times minimum. We're just getting started, bro. But you we're need that. Because I feel like the moment you ever reach a point where it's like, no, I'm good. It, you, stop, you stop the journey of like getting better and growing. Not, not to sound cheesy, but like realistically, if you have that mindset of like, no, it's, I've done it. Yeah, you good. feel that contentness and you just don't want to do anything else. Yeah. Right. And, and I feel like you go through periods of that when you've achieved something big where it's like, OK, sweet. I've, I've accomplished that milestone. Mm -hmm. Like back when we did network marketing, 19 years old, 20 years old, your view on one hundred thousand dollars a year Huge. was Crazy. life. Like you thought once you achieved that, like life was going to be set. Perfect. And then what happens is like once you start getting closer to it and then once you achieved it, you realize this is the beginning. Yeah. But I feel like it could sound crazy to people where it's like, oh, $100,000 is just the beginning. But it's not about the number. Mm -hmm. I think it's just about like setting that milestone yeah. for yourself, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, you want to get to a certain level with your confidence, yeah. right, or public speaking. And it's like setting that milestone. The moment that you've reached it and then you're okay with that is yeah. when everything kind of goes downhill. Well, if you look at it, like you've made 100 a year and you've also made 250 similar with me there isn't too much of a difference. Like obviously I think things get a little bit better, but uh, your quality of life, improves. your quality of life yeah. improves, but then the same old things don't ever change. Like if you're awkward with like socially, mm -hmm. it's not going to go away. Like if you get yeah, money, just you, money, like, yeah. like money, just money. And like, I get it. Obviously you can do more with it. You could help out your family. You, you know, you can live in a nicer place, but um, I think I've realized, and I think you realized too, it's like, I feel like as naive kids, it was just about, we just want to make money so we can prove everyone wrong that we don't have to go down a, this a path. A thousand percent, yeah. And I, th I feel like we're past that part now in our lives. Yep. It's not about that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, like, dude, I have taken my biggest insecurity in the world, yeah. my stuttering. The stutter, yeah. Dude, like the one thing I didn't want anyone to know. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> like, no one. Like, bro, if you said the word stutter, I'd be like, I, I get out of the room. Like, yeah. There was a song by Mariana's Trench called Stutter. Stutter. Mm -hmm. Stutter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you, I yeah. remember that song. Yeah. Dude, I, I couldn't listen to that song. Like Crazy. I would turn it off. Yeah. And now I'm at a place right now where it's like I've taken my insecurity and, I've, and I was like, it's not even about making a lot of money. Like I'm kind of past that phase. It's about like the impact. Obviously, mm -hmm. if you want to grow a company, if you want to bring on employees, yeah. which is what, where I'm at right now, yeah, I, I can't do my thing for free, but yeah. um, so so I get that to the, the like cash in a business is the blood of the company. Super without it, without it. so it's it's not like wow, Daniel, you shouldn't be charging this if you mm -hmm. love what you do or if you are passionate about it. No, no, because you're not thinking about how our economy works. Yeah, but on that front, I took my stutter and I made it, I branded it like I'm, now I'm the stuttering guy. Yeah. Before I'm like, before I'm like, I don't even want to talk about my stutter. Yeah. And I, and I realized that has been the evolution of myself mm -hmm. where I went from this naive kid who just wants to be rich. And then I made 250 and then I'm like, this kind of sucks. I'm working 12 hours a day mm -hmm. and it, this is not what I want.
Yeah. Like I'd rather make you know less and actually have the do what I love at at, at that level. I don't know if that's true that yeah, you'd rather know, rather know, make I less, know. but I, I, know. I, as I get I'm, your as point. I'm saying that like it's yeah. my whole point is like I'm in this phase right now where it's not about just money. Mm-hmm. It's about like now I get up every single day and I love what I fucking yeah. do. Having that like. Uh, I think having that passion, like we both have gone through things. Like one of our old uh, mentors, Grant Cardone, yeah. he teaches like, you got to do the things you hate. And those are the only things you got to do. And I feel like you take that out of context, or at least we did in the beginning where it's like, okay, your whole life should just be doing things you don't like doing, right? And things you hate just so that you could have a, have a paycheck. Like, and, there, and, there's, and there's some logic to that. There's truth in learn to do the things that you don't like doing. Learn to do the things you hate. But the personalities that I feel like we have sometimes is you take things you hear to the extreme and we took the do the things you hate to like your whole life should just be like, yeah, you should be working 12 hour days, 14 hour days. And it's not to shit on that. Like, it's not saying it's not important, yeah. but because that did make us who we are as we've gotten older and learn more for ourselves. It's like, OK, maybe that isn't the kind of lifestyle I want. So, so I get what you mean where it's like it's not just about the money. No. However, I, I challenge you on like, <laughs> I'd, I'd rather make less. And no, like once I feel like once you reach a certain type of lifestyle, it's, it's yeah. difficult to sacrifice yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And it's almost like if you've never made that before, yeah. you don't know what it's like. No. Right. So it's like being broke. You don't know what it's like to have a lot yeah. of money, yeah. but to then experience a lot of money. Yeah. And have it taken away, yeah. it's it's way worse than never having money to be. Well, with. I think, um, and you can. I would. I'm curious to hear what you have to say. Like, I'm 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 at a place where um, I think my identity was money back in the day. Oh yeah. It was almost like my identity is attached to how much money I'm making. Yeah. And it's it's kind of fucked up when you say it like that. Yeah. But it's you know it's like it's like the idea of. The guy, you know, is making millions a year and then something happens and he loses it all and then he jumps off the building because that's his identity. Mm-hmm. That's all he knows. That's an extreme, extreme a case, very thousand percent. But, but he's connected to that. Mm-hmm. So I you, get what you're, so you're you, saying. So you pull that from them yeah. and they're not, they can't bounce back, right? Yeah. And I just, I don't know, I, I, I just find, um, yeah, like I'm not, my identity isn't attached to that as much anymore. And I think that's the evolution yeah. of what I've become like dude i had the mercedes i got rid of the mercedes yeah <laughs> like i don't i don't even want another mercedes but now you're looking at a, a nice I, I, Tesla. I, 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 so that's <laughs> what i'm saying like you have to you have to be honest with yourself about the things and the status that you're looking for in your life does matter yeah because sure. you've attained it sure and you don't want to lose it but i know what you're saying as in terms of that isn't just who you are anymore before yeah. you were your mercedes yeah. You were your, I make six figures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where now it's just those are things that you have or things that you do, and, and you've just figured out more of your identity. Yeah, and I feel like, honestly, like as you continue to evolve and get older, you just continue discovering more about who you really are. And the beginning of at least my life, like I feel like I lost that, yeah. where it's like I just started attaching who I was to the job that I had, the people I was with, yeah. the kind of things I had. Yeah. And that's a very empty life. Like, from personal experience, I would say that, like, there's periods you go through where it's just like, why am I doing any of this anyways? None of this stuff matters. And then you get through the other side where I feel like now you're at the point yeah, yeah, yeah. where you just realize it's, it's more than just having these things. It's yeah. about who I'm becoming. Yeah, and, and I think we, we always thought about that. Um, but, yeah, no, it's, uh, I would like to say I'm probably the happiest I've ever been in my life. Yeah. And I say that humbly, and I, 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 um, I've gone through a lot of ups and downs, but... Dude, I, yeah, like, I wish I was lying. And mm-hmm. obviously, I, I wouldn't wish I was lying. But, um, yeah, like. I know, I know what you mean, though. Like, like it's, it's surreal. Like it's, like, it's almost like my life, you know, and it's like, I'm, I haven't done crazy things in this world. Mm. But I feel like when you hit a place of, like, you're exactly on purpose with what you're supposed to do. Um, like, every single day, I'm just, I'm, I'm so excited. Well, you've, you've took, taken, like, something you were insecure about. Yeah and literally turn that into your business, Which right? Is crazy. And, and then taking that even further just from stuttering into overall communication, yeah. uh, which is why I'm super supportive of it, is it's, it's something that like, I've actually seen you struggle with. Yeah. Like I remember when we used to have these events and you'd get up on stage and speak and you would stutter. Yeah. People don't even really take in no, when people stutter. It, the person who's stuttering makes it a way bigger deal. 100%. Um, public speaking overall, you make things a way bigger deal than, than what's actually happening. But then you'd come off stage and you and I would talk and be like, fuck, like, so I've seen that. Yeah. So that's why it's cool from my perspective to just see the evolution 
and then seeing like I remember when you first made it made the business you know yeah. and it was in the beginning it was it was really niche on just stuttering of course. but for like now it's more broad and it's more communication yeah. confident skill set but I remember I was just like man like I really fuck with that I really support yeah. Just, just the fact that you turned an insecurity into a business. It's crazy. It's, and, it's, it's nuts. Well, it's, it's, it's almost like uh, it's hard to replace me. Hmm. Like, and, and I, I say what that because, like, you know, like if I had an Amazon FBA business, if I had a consulting business, right? Like a more generic? Yeah, like a more okay. generic. Like I have something to go into this industry. You hmm. got to stutter. You got to okay, deal so, with yeah. it. And then you got to overcome it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like I took something and I, I, I've talked about this before. Like my, my year from when I joined Verve to about 27 was my seven years of like trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. It was like I'm knocking doors. I'm getting rejected. Going through um, the shit. Going through the shit. And I'm yeah. getting back up and like I'll knock a door and I'll stutter and then I'll, I'll cry mm -hmm. or I'll do a presentation and it went horrible and I would just I beat myself up. And I've gotten over that. Um, to where I'm at a place right now where I could just be on a podcast. We really haven't prepared much and we can just have a great dope conversation. Let's go, yeah. Um, it, it's cool to see the development. And yeah, so it's like, now I'm at a place right now where it's like, I've taken something, I've overcome it. Mm -hmm. And now, and what I'm trying to get at too is the people that I work with, it's like, bro, I know what it feels like when you're talking and people don't look you in the eyes. Yeah. Like if you've never stuttered, you don't know that. Yeah. You know? It's, or, or it's like... If you haven't had communication issues. Yeah, or it's... stuttering is just one sector. Sure, but, yeah. I, but I get it when it's like, okay, hurry up, dude. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Or people are like looking down like, yeah. are you okay? Yeah. You know, like, I know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. I, I know what it feels like when you can't say the word um, trust, so you say the word loyal. Because, mm -hmm. and they're like, well, why are you saying the word loyal? Because you can't say trust. Just because of the way the So speech what they happens. do is they switch up words. Uh, because they know that they'll stutter on this word. So they... So they, it's smart. It's, it's a way smart. To cope. It's and, a way to cope and with it's, it. it's, it's, yeah, right. Or I've even working with people that are on antidepressants, and I'm like, mm. they're like, this is what my psychiatrist has told me to use. It's yeah, crazy. That's a, that's a whole. And then, and then I'm, and then, or I've, I've dealt with, I've dealt with. Um, it, it's actually crazy now as I talk about it. Like, dude, I have like engineers. I have, I have a doctor in my program. Like, I have business owners. Like, mm. I have, I have um, someone who's 13 or 14. Well, it's people from all walks of life. It's crazy, but but I get it. But yeah. I get it, and they've gone through years of speech therapy. And this yeah. is what I mean by it. And not to just have this all on me, but yeah. it's like I'm living in my purpose. And mm -hmm. because I get it, I'm now an inspiration. And it's like, dude, like I understand. And now I'm handling something um, through public speaking. Yeah, which is like, cause that's that's kind of where we started, bro. And. and yeah, crazy, right? <laughs> it, it, it's nuts. But like your point of not being replaced, I didn't know where you were going to take that. I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, it's it, just the thing itself sounds like pretty cheesy to say, but then I'm like, hey, I'll give you some time to like, Like it. you can't be like, I'm going to go into stuttering because you've never stuttered. Yeah, people have an experience. So people without struggles in communication yes. to have this sort of a business, it doesn't hit the same yeah, versus yeah, yeah, if you yeah. just have a generic Amazon FBA where you're slinging chairs or something, yeah. anybody who is willing yeah. can do that so I, I know what you mean yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, I think overall man it's like the whole thing on on your purpose like living on your purpose I think we've we've experienced both ends of the spectrum on that where it's like what I mean by that is in the beginning we didn't really care because we were taught just do things you hate yeah. right so it's like fuck your purpose it's about money and then you kind of take it to the other extreme like at least I did where it's like no it's all about being happy and all about following your purpose or it's like man I feel like you need to find a balance. Like everything balance. in life is balance. And the old Damn, Andrew, yeah. now we're talking, bro. So the old Andrew, <laughs> though, if I would have heard me say that, I would have been like, shame on you. Like, you shouldn't have balance. You should be fucking hard work because you have goals. Yeah. Uh, like being an ambitious person. But now looking back at it, it's just like, man, it's all about balance. So the whole yeah. being on your purpose, yes, a thousand percent. Yeah. But if, you're, if your passion is like, I don't know, some people have really weird things that they're passionate about, like a uh, collections, like people who collect stamps and shit like that. Sure, if that's the thing you're passionate about, nobody can shit on that. However, is that really a business that you could generate a living off of and a living you're comfortable with? For sure. So like I see like for you, like you've developed a business that brings in enough revenue to sustain a lifestyle and you to still be ambitious, yes. but it is something you're aligned with. And yeah. I feel like that, that that lack of congruency, you could tell. 
Like I've done a lot of things in my career where I have not been passionate about it. Yeah. And I felt like over time it just ate away. But at the end of it, you're just left like, you question, what am I doing here? Right? And, and I know we both experienced, experienced those things and we both pushed ourselves past points that like looking back at it, it's like, man, like if only I would have known what I've known, what I know today. Yeah. Right? So I think like you overall taking a thing that you struggled with, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's sweet that you turn it into a passion. Yeah. But at the same time, it's a passion that you were able to make a business out of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you were collecting stamps, I don't know if you'd be able to run a, run a business. Well, can, you a sustain, can you sustain your lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Like this is expensive. Yeah. To do, I mean, expensive compared to what, but yeah, like it's, um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's about being the guy who walks around with a pickle up his ass, who's like constantly working 15 hours a day. <laughs> never heard that expression before. <laughs> a pickle, a stick? I've heard of a stick up his ass. Pickle, it's a like cucumber. Pickle. You're just, you're just, just, the just super tight, just super tight. <laughs> <tight. laughs> uh, I know what you mean, like but, somebody who's uptight. Uptight, and yeah. all they do is they work seven days a week, and they got nothing else. Yeah. And then you got, um, or for the most part, or you got the hippies, hippies who they're walking on the beach all day, and they're not really making an impact on the world. Like it's just, they're just. It, well, sorry, let me. If I've offended any any hippies, I'm I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, <laughs> but it's it's where I you're not. <laughs> to that. But it's it's the person of there's not much going on. And they're just, one day it's coming, one day it's coming. So I, I understand what you mean. It's You have to have the balance, mm -hmm. of, balance. of working, but also enjoying your life. Like I, I, I actually, and this is a huge thing for me, like the work hard, play hard. Like, I, like I'm a big fan. This is actually what I teach in, uh, in, one, of my, um, in, in one of my programs, which is um, if you're a business owner or if you got a lot going on, I'm a big fan of taking vacations. thousand percent. Like I'm a big fan of... Um, like, like both of us are gonna go on a, a, a good vacation soon. Mexico. Oh man, end of March, let's go. And then Hawaii mm -hmm. next. And then, um, but I kind of live that, I kind of live that, uh, that life of every 90 days, you take a break from it. So, so you push, I mean, that's, 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 a, your. that's, a, that's an idea, right? Yeah. But every, every 90 days or every whatever it's gonna it be different could be, for different people sure but the whole idea is you is you push mm. like for me because i'm going away at the end of march i'm pushing my ass off yep. to make sure that my team's in check yep. to make sure that everyone knows the role to make sure that we're doing exactly what is done. needed whereas if like it's a deadline mm -hmm. so i feel like that's been working with me yeah. and i'm running to march but then i got something in april and then i got something in uh so it, it's not every 90 days but you know then i got something in july my man yeah. you know but it's doing that um you know pushes me to work kind of harder and whereas back in the day dude i was what's a vacation and there was no lead at the end of the tunnel there was and and it mm -hmm. was and it was we were working and then our vacation was a business conference yeah, so it's not a vacation, and, <laughs> so and, not and this is the thing, like I get, I get super fired up about this just <laughs> because we glorified the hard work and the fucking burning yourself out, and it's such bullshit. Like, you do not have to do that to experience. Like, I, I'm earning more now than I ever have, Same. and I am not Same. putting in the amount of, like, t physical time. Yeah. Like, the energy is, di this is still fucking hard work, it's just different, yeah. right? It's not, I'm working 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day, doing something I hate, just so I could make money. But again, the mindset that we had was like, we gotta grind ourselves to a pulp because there is no such thing as burnout. Well, and, and to kind of add to that, like, bro, like, we only have what? Maybe 70, 80 years on, on, this, on, on this planet? Or, I, I mean, or, I feel like okay, my technology's man. gonna sure, extend sure. this. Period. Okay, let, let, let's go 90. Let's yeah. just pop the champagne, it's gonna be yeah. 90, whatever. The whole point is this. You wanna die quicker? Be in a stressed place all the time. 100%. You wanna, you wanna have disease in your life? Yeah. Be stressed all the time. Just be, just be always anxious about getting to work. Don't get a lot of rest and just push six days a week. Work hard. That's uh, to yeah. me, that's how you die early. And to me, when you look back at your life, when you're older, you're like, dude, like yeah. I didn't even fucking enjoy it. Yeah. So I've realized even myself right now, one of the biggest things that I'm always focused on, even like, yeah, exactly. I'm at a point right now where I'm making, I'm financially, I'm doing the best I've ever done in my life and I'm not working as hard. But the whole idea about how to challenge the work hard because you're putting <laughs> no, because what you, was a challenge talk no, with Dana you're, you're putting real talk. Real you're talk. putting the same energy. <laughs> yeah. It's just because it's something you enjoy. Yes. 
Like, man, you're still waking up fairly early. Like, you hit I'm, me up. I'm up at five forty-five. That's what I mean. You're, but like, you're alive. still living that life. It's just different. It's different. The energy that you're putting into it is different versus when you're doing something that's like grinding you to a pulp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking miserable. Yeah. Versus now, like you saying, like you, you're the happiest you've been. Yeah. Like I know that's true because I've seen like both sides of the spectrum. I've seen the guy hustling at something he doesn't like yeah. versus. So I wouldn't say you're not working sure. hard. And I, I just I'm not working as hard. I'm calling that out though. Uh, agreed. Just because when people hear that, they're like, oh yeah, it's not about hard work. Like sure. no, you have to put in of the hard work. It's just a different degree. Yeah. of hard work is, is on oh, sure 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 I, and i understand someone might take that the wrong way like i'm yeah. just relaxing all day no if you look at my week i got a busy week booked with shit yeah i know exactly. i i got a busy week yeah. i dude i'm at a place where i have a whole team now so i gotta make sure that they're doing their thing yep. um but i'm in expansion mode mm -hmm. so i'm happy yeah um so i think i think to add to that maybe when you're not in expansion mode but i don't know what i was gonna say you know you said every 90 days yes Right. So and that's something that works for you. And I feel like for different people, like for some people, they could they go longer periods of time, but then enjoy a longer time off or, or something. Sure. So I feel like everybody's got to find what works for them. Yeah. But the reason I'm bringing that up to go full circle on it is I feel like the idea of setting a date, right, setting a time a deadline, on something, exactly. a deadline creates like Grant had this analogy yeah. back in the day at, about at the conference, if I gave you an assignment to do. And, I'm, and you're like, when's it due? And I'm like, oh, it's not due till 2023. You, as a human, you'd get started December 31st of 2022 at fucking like 11 o'clock, right? Just because it's human nature to want to push things off. Yeah. But if I said, hey, you have an assignment due, and you're like, when's it due? And I'm like, at, it's two o'clock at three o'clock. You'd get started on it immediately. So I feel like your idea about setting those things every 90 days for you works really well yeah. for you. Cause you're like, I know I have to get this, 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 and this done yeah. so that I could enjoy the 90 day thing, sure. right? The vacation or the time off, yeah. the time with family, whatever it well, happens it's to the, It's the play hard time. Yeah. So I've scheduled play hard or whatever, if you want to call it play hard. I've scheduled play time yeah. within my year. Yeah, which, which I think is overlooked. Yeah. Like, again, I never took a vacation. In the yeah, dude, when, where, where, where have you uh, vacation to? I've never, like, I, that's <laughs> the thing. And that's, that's why it's so like critical. And, and I've learned so this crazy. as I've gotten older is like, as much as it's cool to do a, vacation slash business trip yeah. they all shouldn't be that like yeah. literally everywhere we've gone like we've gone to miami we've gone to vegas aruba arizona. all these yeah arizona cali all these places have always been some sort of business conference yeah. or development thing yeah which which isn't bad like, but don't if get me that's wrong. all you're doing yeah, yeah. like if, don't get me like now i'm looking at mexico and i am super pumped because i'm like this <laughs> this is the first time i'm really gonna unplug and i mean yeah. unplug and I think this is an important topic to bring up too, like yeah, yeah, for nice. business people, like really unplugging. Like I put my phone on do not disturb a lot when I'm not working, right? Yeah. Just because I don't, when people are texting you and stuff, even if it's not about work, it's just you're at the mercy of somebody else's requests. Yeah. And, I, and I feel like early on in our career, we did not care. It yeah. was always on the clock. I was living in Vancouver and I had clients in Toronto. So they're three hours ahead. Yeah, no, no problem. I'll run a, your 8 a.m. meeting. And it's 5 a.m. my time. And, oh my and God. like being at the office suited and booted, like there's a time and place. Yeah. But again, we took it out of context to the degree of like, you should always do the things you hate. Yeah, and I think there's, I think there's also an evolution and, and, and that's also the mm. other thing too. I'm glad I outworked people when I was at the bottom of the, of the, of the ranking, if you mm. want to call them. I think that was one of the, the biggest things, right? Is initially it's all about who can outwork the other person. Right, uh, like when you're first, like for example, in door to door, who can knock more doors than the other? Because that played a vital role of who can make the most money. Yep. So that actually works initially, but I think what we're talking about is long term, mm -hmm. like over your, your twenty career, years. Yeah. Like you can work your ass off for six months or a year, mm -hmm. but over twenty years, that ain't gonna work. Not sustainable. That it, the, that's not sustainable. And I think that's kind of where we hit. Mm -hmm. Whereas like it's a full circle. It's like we're eight years into this. Yeah. What, whatever you whatever you want to call this world this business world sales world um, it's, it's entrepreneurship overall entrepreneurship because world. even and this is something I really believe in like salespeople are many entrepreneurs yeah. it's just like if you're an employee salesperson you are still an entrepreneur you're just I guess it's an entrepreneur like you're working inside because think about it, you are responsible to bring in revenue in order for yourself to get paid yeah. what is a business the exact same thing you exactly. bring, bring in revenue to get paid yeah. So I feel like that lifestyle, like the entrepreneur lifestyle, a thousand percent I agree. Like in the beginning, you have to learn how to 
put in the time and, and do the hard work. Yeah. And with door to door in particular, like you do have to knock a lot of doors in the beginning. Yeah. And then you could get to a point where, okay, your pitch isn't as horrible. You've learned how to communicate yeah. more efficiently. Work more smarter. Like young Andrew, I had to knock a hundred doors a day to make. And because a he was sales. bad at speaking. Now it's like my goal anytime I go out in the field is always like, how do I get a sale the first door I knock? Yeah, exactly. Right? So it's it's playing a different game, but and I you think have that we, skill level. Thousand percent. But I think we both seen, and this is why what makes it interesting is we both seen various people in our lives, like friends, family who've been on all the different sides of the spectrum of this. Yeah. People who don't take work serious at all. Yeah. Like they just plug into a job, they go home. But some of those people are happy. Yeah. Like, and, and this is something I firmly believe. Like, it's just your personality type. Like some people are truly happy when they just go to a nine to five that they don't really have to like engage stress with. Sure. And then go home and get to like relax, turn on the TV and enjoy their life. Yeah. Like some of those people are actually happy. And it makes sense. But on for like our personality, my personality. It's like doing something like that wouldn't make me happy. But it doesn't mean that another person is wrong because that makes them happy. Where in the beginning of my career, my mindset was like, oh, if you're not working 12 hours a day, if you're not knocking 100 doors, I don't know what you're doing. You're average. So we've, yeah. I don't uh, even say that word. <laughs> we've just seen like all the different people who crazy. overwork themselves crazy. To, crazy. to crazy points. People who don't work and yeah. don't put in time. And it's, yeah. again, all goes back to like finding the balance that is the balance for you. It's crazy, man. It's yeah. crazy. I feel like if you recorded us probably three, four years ago, we would not be having this conversation right now. Mm. We'd say, say, guys, guys, I gotta go. Yeah. I gotta go, uh, I, I, I gotta get out of here. Bye, bye, take care. Yeah. And it's, you're work. always like, you know, that's why you got so many speeding tickets, you know? It's, uh... <laughs> this guy's gonna bring up my speeding tickets. No, I, I think uh, just on the subject of stress too, Yeah. I yeah. feel like, like what you said about like dying early. Yeah. Like that's such that's a, I'm telling you. But it's such a overlooked, like people don't actually consider that. Like if you live a very stressful life. You will die early. And, and you're not gonna enjoy it. No. Right? And I do think like life is meant to be enjoyed. Um, like a thousand, there's no debating on that. Do you know what I mean? Like your life is meant to be enjoyed. Yeah. However, you could take it too far in either direction. Yeah. You could take it far of like, yeah, I just, I just gotta enjoy it and do nothing. Or you could take, in the business sense, or you could take it so far where you're like, I just got to work so that one day yeah. I can enjoy it. The problem is I don't think there's ever well, a one day. You have to enjoy the process. Like mm -hmm. when I first started, you know, um, my business, dude, for six months, I didn't make a single dollar. Yeah. But I, I love that. I love that time. You know, I, I was I was stressing because I didn't know, I was gonna say, I don't is know this really going to work? It. Be, what, what I'm, it, well, I enjoyed that more than if I was, for example, at a different job, just showing up and just, yeah. and, and just hustling. So I actually enjoy that more. Um, the second thing is um, with with life, if you're always uh, hustling and you're not enjoying like the actual journey for the most part, it's mm -hmm. like then you get to the end and it's vacation time and you're sick. Like it's like being sick on vacation. The vacation sucks. Yeah. Right. So to me, it's like if you're always stressed and then you get to the end of the rainbow and you're 50 years old, but now you're a billionaire. But dude, like you're depleted. That's not a fun life. I mean, question, no, but a billion, that's a different story. Okay, okay, I, I get I, I get with the challenges. But but to me, it's like, like I, and that was one of the biggest things, like even where I'm at right now, dude, I'm rekindling a lot of my relationships. Yeah. Like when I'm working all the time. You don't have time for that. I don't have time for relationships. Yeah. Super critical point. And, and like, critical. like it kills me because that makes me who I am. Yeah. That makes me who I am. Like having that groundingness, like even like, bro, even we're closer, mm. right? Um, and just connecting with old friends and, and family members and, and just like, how is everything going? And it's like, okay, I do what I do and you do what you do, but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I love you for who you are. Yeah. But, that's, what, that's what I was saying. But right? I was so against that. And when I've rekindled that, I'm starting to enjoy the journey again. When I'm always, yeah, like I can't come to this party. I can't go to this wedding. I can't do this. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, like the amount of no's I said to I can't things, come to Christmas. I can't come to Christmas. Yeah. Right? That was that you? Yeah. Yeah. All, all the time. I know. So, life sucks like that. Yeah. And what are you working for? For a big check? Yeah. What's that? What's that check going to do? Well, well, I'm doing it because I want to change the world. Ah, mm. I got that, bro. Well, I think even people who don't, even people who are just selfish with it. Like I wasn't a change the world person, and I haven't been. I'm not going to lie to you. And I don't think that needs to be everybody's goal. Like everybody shouldn't be focused on like trying to change the world. Like yeah. everybody needs their own goal. But I think like, like, like what you were saying those meaningful relationships just play such a 
pivotal role, at least for me, in having like a fulfilled life where I feel like working hard too much where you don't have time for those things. At least that's what you tell yourself, right? Like I remember so often like my family reaching out because we lived out west. Yeah. Like, hey, are you coming home for Christmas? It's, it's like, no, I have too much going on. Yeah. Where it's like, it's now, ridiculous. Look, yeah, it's like now looking what? back, it's like, man, I, I am so happy enjoying those Sundays watching football with my dad. Yeah. Where before I would work, we would work Wednesday to Sunday. I know. I'd be doing development on Sundays, and and I'd feel guilty if I was watching football. Yeah. So man, on Sundays, leave me alone. Like yeah. Sunday is the football day. Yeah. For and me. and I call you every single day, and on Sunday you. I'm uh... like, hey, leave me alone. <laughs> right? But it's it's having those like meaningful relationships with the people who matter in your life. Yeah. I think is so easily forgotten about yeah. because everybody, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, or not everybody gets busy. Like everybody thinks their life gets too busy and it's so important to actually make time to see the people you care about, spend time with your family and your friends where, man, let's be honest, like there was a section in our lives where it was almost looked down upon to spend time with your family. It's, it's ridiculous. Like, that blows it, my mind that we let ourselves mentally get to that. It's point. ridiculous. And, and like, we're obviously, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm moving out. Like I've been with them for a little bit. Um, it's a long story, you know, but. Um, I'm like, I've, I've connected myself with my roots again mm -hmm. and that makes me happier. And guess what it does? It makes me produce at a higher level as well. Thousand percent. Guess, guess I can be on this podcast and just be grounded in me. Mm -hmm. Whereas, yeah, like I was, um, it's crazy, man. Thinking about it. Yeah. And you I know? think overall, like, and I, I want to say, if you're watching this and I got any, any family members, I love you guys all. You know, if I, um, haven't been close to you in a while, um, I want to I want to rekindle our, our relationship because dude like I I ran away from that yeah for for stupid reasons so you know and bag. I mean listen there's also the other the the other path of we're getting older and we're becoming more men mm. and we're, we're adults and blah 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 but um, yeah yeah I think it's critical and just going back to like and that's one component of your life yeah right work like being on purpose or enjoying what you're doing another portion of your life your health, your physical health. I, I know I've worked so much where that hasn't been a priority at all. Yeah. I would either let myself get too skinny, right, where I wasn't working out and exercising. When you were vegan? Or, I was vegan, I don't wanna talk about that. <laughs> or, <laughs> it's the time of my life I'm not happy about. Um, or, man, like, when I was living in LA, I got, I got too fat. Like, it wasn't my priority. Yeah. And I think, again, full circle, I've said this a million times, but the balance. Yeah. Having all of these different sectors of your life, like, yeah. feeling like they're on point, it brings out a different degree of happiness in you where it's like you, you go to bed and like before you go to sleep, you actually feel grateful about your life, like truly. Because yeah. I would have these moments of gratitude when I would achieve a big milestone, like the $100,000 a year. I remember we came back like during Christmas time and I felt amazing and, until I didn't, yeah. right? And then it's like, you, so you feel the pleasure and the gratitude once you achieve those things, but then there's emptiness to it if the other sections of your life aren't hitting. Of course. Right? And that's so, what I mean, being that 50 year old, and it's like all you got to show is money. Yeah. Or whatever. It's right? like, what was the purpose of yeah. that? Yeah. And then you got like a bunch of fake people around you. That, you yeah, know? that's a different. That's, that's why I value our relationship. Because, mm -hmm. bro, we have like, we have time. You yeah. know, there's, there's, uh, and that's important to have. You can't just build a relationship like this overnight between us. No, yeah. Right? You, like, it's, you can't. Time is a factor, but you also have Experience. to. Experience. I was going to say, the shit that you go through with people, yeah. I think. And that's why sales brings people so close together. Like yeah. I've seen like running sales companies, people within a year build friendships that, man, if they didn't go through the shit they went through together, yeah, it takes a lifetime. lifetime. And it's like, again, th I just can't stress the importance enough of having good people around you yeah. and the right people around you because yeah. at the end of the day, no matter what anybody says, yeah. you, we're all influenced by the people around us, yeah. right? Like yeah, there's no, like, if you spend enough time with somebody, you're going to pick up on habits and shit that they do and personality traits. So it's super critical to be around the right kind of people, I think, so that you could experience the kind of life that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we both thought we wanted something that once we got it, we realized this isn't what we want. We both thought it was just money. You know what I mean? Like, we thought that was it. Like, it was just, it's all about having money and doing well financially, but, like, there's so much more. You know, to life than yeah. that. So. And and I, I want to take a quick pause. And as the audience, as you're as you're listening, I don't know where you're at. Whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a salesperson, whether you're a performer, it, it doesn't matter where you're at. I want you guys to to look at a conversation like what what I'm having right now with Andrew. And you know, we're swearing at times. 
We're saying probably ums and you knows and a bunch of other things. Um, but the point of communication isn't just about being this perfect speaker. Yeah, this like flawless, is flawless yeah. and oh no, I, I said the wrong word. I'm pretty sure I, I've said the wrong word or I mean, like it doesn't matter about having perfect grammar. What, what this podcast is really about is having that genuine conversation. And I've, I've, I feel like it's a fairly raw, authentic, genuine conversation. And as the viewer, I'm sure you could tell that that's what great communication is. Like it's, it's touching the heart. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you could feel the emotion. Um, so just want to take a quick pause because we're talking about some, we, we, have, we haven't had like a deep conversation like this in a while, my man. Yeah. And I, I think the, the last point I want to bring up is just, you talked about having that raw conversation, right? That real conversation. You got to ask yourself, like, when's the last time you had that with yourself? Damn! You know I, I know, but like, it sounds <laughs> cliche, whatever, but actually like, man, something I've been doing as of lately is like journaling. And not just, I always used to write shit down, like my goals and, and things I'm grateful for yeah. to keep myself sane along, along the journey. But like having that, taking the time to like actually journal the thoughts that are having a real conversation with yourself to yeah. see where you're at, to see the areas of your life that you're struggling in. I, I don't think enough people actually do it because it does take time. And it's like, it's uncomfortable, mm. right? Like to actually sit there and ponder you know, what, what am I going through right now? How am I feeling? What are the different things that I feel like I could be doing better at? Because yeah. I know for me, like, again, work was always such a priority. You know, in, in recent times, the past six months, past year, I've like really valued, again, the connections with friends and family yeah. and from journaling, like just realizing. Really? Like, yeah, you, from you journaling. haven't told me this. <laughs> it never really came up. But like, it's like nine o'clock at night. <laughs> Air, airplane mode goes on. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm out here fucking <laughs> scribbling away. No. I, I normally do it uh, in the mornings, but it's like, because it's just a good habit. It's like working out, right? It's just like you, there's always a lot going on in my brain. Like yeah. I know for you too, like there's just a lot going on. So it's Lots nice, it's nice to put things onto paper because yeah. then it gives you that like, that clarity yeah. that you can then focus on work more and stuff. Yeah. Well, so. I, I mean, listen, I, I, I'd be lying to say I, I still don't work hard because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I would say I'm, <laughs> I would say if I'm up, I'm basically working because I'm always thinking about what I'm doing. Yeah. Like I could never turn that off. Am I doing the monotonous, um, things habitual yeah. things, right? Yeah. No, but I'm always thinking about how, what can I do better? Like even planning a podcast like this, mm-hmm. you think it's just like the camera crew showed up and you know, there wasn't conversations, you know, with Chris and there wasn't, um, there, you know, we had to do certain things. And this is your first area. One. And yeah, like, yeah. like it's, it wasn't easy, yeah. but I had to. I had to literally, like, which is really cool. I think about right now. I had to plant. Um, I had to build this vision in my head first. Mm-hmm. And literally, it's like I would go on drives. And I'm just like, okay, so what would be the podcast called? Yeah. How would the podcast look like? Who do I need? How do we? Okay, so then we record it. Great, but who, how do we edit it? Yeah. And then when we post it, what type of headline? Like, there's a, yeah. there's so much Marketing. to it. Yeah. There's so much to it. Yeah. Um, so, so that aspect of me that's always thinking, that's always working, um, never actually turns off. So I'd be, I'd be lying to say if I, if I don't, you know, work a lot, but I think it's a different type of work. Yeah. Um, and because I, you're passionate about it. Doesn't it feel like work? No. And, and, and what gets me rolling is the fact that I, I got my foundation yeah. with my family and friends. I got my health. Yeah. Um, and I, I, like, I feel like we're always learning, like, you know, and, and that kind of adds to it. Let's you know, this, this is always a great conversation because we were personal development Fiends. Yeah. <laughs> Fiends is a good word for it. Fiends. Like yeah. we would, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I think that there's obviously still an aspect of me. Yeah. This is actually a great conversation yeah. because we would be the guys, like we would obviously knock doors from like one to eight. Um, but initially, you know, in the mornings we would, we would be uh, learning from what, from, we would hit the gym at seven, come home by eight. And then from what, eight to 1130? Yeah. Just we'd be studying. reading, listening to audio. And then on the or... weekends, that's what we were doing as well. Yeah. And then even after work as well. And then even yeah. during the day when I was knocking, I'd be listening to audiobooks or when I was doing different driving things. Driving in between. Driving. Areas, yeah. It's like we would drive from Vancouver to Kelowna listening yeah. to audiobooks the whole time. Yeah. Um, but now it's like I'm, I'm kind of at a place where, and if you're on your journey, you need to be reading. Like I just read the book Atomic Habits. So I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still reading. But now it's a different type of personal development. Mm. Like now it's like, I, like this is personal development, starting a brand new podcast and trying to yeah. um, strategize it and then being on point. Another thing is like going up to 
strangers and yeah. saying hi to them. Another one is, um, you know, I, I don't know, like it just, and to me, everything is personal development. It's not just, I got to read a book. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, Her, I to an audio book. was like, you have to consume content that's from the personal development industry, the self-help industry, where I feel like, man, real personal development is like, again, you having a real talk with yourself or with another person and identifying yeah. what are the things I actually need to work on as a person. Because yeah. even just personal development, like yeah. it's all you. It's not like, it's not just about reading a book that somebody else thinks is good for you. It's like you identifying, I'm struggling with stuttering. Yeah. Googling stuttering, ending up on master your stutter and finding that, like that's personal development. You finding the different things. My health's suffering. Right? Hey, I got to spend some time focusing on my health. That's real personal development. And I, I think we were very uh, naive to just think personal Which isn't development bad. is self help. Yeah. And, and, and we, we, I almost like idolize certain people. Yeah. Like, this is the only way. Yeah. Like, I, th I think that's too extreme. Like, you know, like, yeah. this is the only way. Like, like there's so, uh, there's, there's such a big world out there, right? So I think, I think having, having, like, now I'm at a place where it's like, I, I really tr trust my gut and, and intuition. And it's not speaks. like I, it's not like this person, like KT, that we, that we supposed to do. Like, he knows what's better for me. Mm. This is how things should be done, right? That is the way of thinking. And now I'm at a place right now where it's like, dude, I've made decisions in my life, and they've fucking worked. <laughs> and I, I, I'm just doing more of it. Yeah. Like I guarantee, like I have coaches. Don't get me wrong, right? I, I literally just invested, you know, a good chunk of money into a, a pretty big year coaching uh, program. So I, I don't do that. But the coach I have right now probably wouldn't recommend me doing this. Mm. He, he, he would say, what are you doing? Like, there's a process, just follow it. But this is what I want to do. I trust my gut. Yeah. And I think that was a huge change in my life. Huge and huge. Yeah. Where I, huge. And where I feel like back in the day, we would be like, this is the only way. Like if yeah. KT's saying this, this is what we got to do. Well, it was a one track mind. Yeah. Right, like it was like you couldn't tell us shit. Like this was it, this this is the way of life. And again, as we get older, it's you realize no, like there's so many different, um, and, and even like it's, we don't have it figured out. No, you know what I mean. It's it's we're figuring it out, yeah. and I think that we thought we had it figured out. And again, like what I mentioned earlier, the moment you think you've made it, the moment you think you have it figured out, is the moment real growth stops. And I feel like that happened for me at an earlier stage in my career, and then I thought I was experiencing real growth, but it was all just appearances it was all the things in my life started to look better but who I was as a person and, and what I was happy with wasn't there and over time it's like you lose the sense of self that's why like again real personal development is not just about like yeah having coaches and stuff is important yeah. like without reading a doubt, books is important audiobooks is important you need to learn the courses are right important. listen especially like skill sets and things you want to accomplish but I think in my opinion the real personal development that I've experienced has been identifying real weaknesses and areas that I struggle with and figuring out how do I improve those. Yeah. Whether it's through reading a book, an audio, going yeah. through something, journaling, yeah. right, working out, yeah. having tough conversations with people in my life. Like, I feel like uh, the government audits you, that, you know, they do some taxes on you and you have to do it to yourself. My man. You know, you have to have that like <laughs> real honest look at everything yeah. and just identify, yeah. okay, you know what, this isn't as ideal as it should be as I would like it to be. And the cool thing I think about life, and I don't, I don't know how we're doing for time, um, but the cool thing Good that, I think, that yeah. I think about life is like nobody can tell you what those goals should be for you. Like yeah. nobody can tell Daniel, no. you know what, you shouldn't spend as much time with your family. No. If, if your goal is to have that like family balance in your life, man, yeah. that's your goal. Yeah. But I, I think we were, we're... When we were naive. And easily we, influenced. Easily influenced, we bought into that. Yeah. And then you kind of go back to your roots. You're like, what? The f what? Yeah. How, how did I let myself get to that, <laughs> so, that state? Man, that's where I genuinely feel like a big chunk of my career, I lost who I was. Well, and that's kind of one of the questions that I want to ask you. And like, listen, at the end of the day, too, we're not trying to shit on that. Yeah. It's, I'm so grateful. I wouldn't be the person I am today with all that ex Without a doubt. experience, right? Yeah. But I do believe at some level I was going to be successful regardless. You know what I'm saying? Like if, you know, so, um, because I think I'm, that's how I'm bred, right? Mm -hmm. um, my question too is what 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 regrets do you have? What regrets with an A? <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> yeah, I can get that tatted. You know what, man? I, I generally don't. Yeah. Like, and I'm not I'm not fucking perfect. I made a lot of mistakes in my life. I've done a lot of bad things. 
Um, I, I've done things that, you know, I'm not happy with that I did. However, I don't regret anything I've done because, as you just said, it, it does result in the person you are today, and I've learned from it. Yeah. Like, nobody is perfect. Any, any person trying to flex like they're, they have all their shit figured out and they're perfect is, is lying to themselves. And that's what I was doing for a long time, yeah. lying to myself about, yeah, everything's good. I have the car. I live in the place. I got the girl. I'm doing all these things. Yeah. But it's like, man, when I actually looked in the mirror, it's like, no, like, yeah. there's things that I could be doing better at internally. So to answer your question, there's nothing I actually regret because I feel like all of it has led me to be the person I am today. Yeah. And I wouldn't change same, anything. Same. It, it happened. Some things I'm super proud of. Other things I'm not. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not happy about like, fuck, I shouldn't have done that. Um, but it's not, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, it's like, yeah. man, I can't hate on 25-year-old Andrew. I can't hate on 22-year-old Andrew. No. He knew what he knew at that time, yeah. and that led him to the decisions he made. Yeah. All, all I could do is moving forward, learn from those things, and hey, maybe I shouldn't do that again, yeah. right? Versus if you're a, like kind of a psychopath where it's like, you know, yes, I made all these mistakes, but I'm gonna keep making them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's different. That's and, the and that's the no regrets, like regrets. Yeah, no. I think that's the no regrets. Um, so yeah, there's there's nothing. How about you? Anything you regret? <laughs> You're like, stop asking me questions. Yeah, how about you? Um, yeah, so let me think about it. Regrets, 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 regrets. Um, you know, I think, I, I don't, yeah, I don't really have any regrets. Like, I think there's sometimes, like, things will pop up in my mind. And I'm like, why did I do that? That was really dumb of me. Yeah. But it was you all that I knew those. at the time. Yeah. It was, I think it was all that I knew at the time. Um, yeah, like, I'm, I mean, like, at the end of the day, I'm in a great place in my life. So how could I regret anything? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like if, like literally if, if, if I look at my life, like we got, we got a camera crew. We, I got a great friend over here. We got two solid dudes over here. We're, we're having a great conversation. Okay. I look at my life and I'm like, I ended up where I'm supposed mm. to be. How about during the times that you weren't, cause it's not like, let's be real. You weren't 24 seven in a state of perpetual happiness. Right, and even still, obviously you have moments. Yeah. How about during those times when it was like you were struggling? Yeah. At that point, did you feel like you regretted decisions you made? No, because I feel like whatever I do, I go all in, even if it's the wrong decision. That's a good point. It's, yeah. kind of a, it's like a no looking back. It's, I've, I've burnt the boats in everything yeah. I do. Like think about it, we have people in our lives, obviously we're not, we're not gonna drop names, but where we've all made a decision to start something and then we're a couple months in and people back out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Personal. And because on paper it makes sense. Yeah. Nothing's happening. Remember what was what was your uh, I don't know if you talk numbers about your first check at, at Grand Cardone. Was it like oh, two hundred bucks? I made one hundred and eighty six dollars <laughs> in a month. In a month. Yeah. Like on paper, you, and you're working what six days a week? Yeah. Like yeah. And you're spending, you know, more. Spending money, time. So on paper it makes no sense, but yeah. me and you both have the mindset of. This will make sense. This will, yeah. We will work hard enough yeah. for it to make sense. Yeah. Yeah. So when you have that mindset, it's hard to regret anything. Mm -hmm. Like what I don't regret, mm -hmm. right, is like me pushing through the hard times. Like when we're in Edmonton and we're knocking doors and I remember just like a crowd would come in and then a crowd would leave. Yeah. A crowd would come in a crowd, and we would just like, we keep showing up. Yeah. Or we would be in different locations. Because door to door has quitting. crazy churn, right? Like, People coming dude, in. I never ask what happened to that person. Yeah. Oh, is that person okay? Is that person sick? Uh, I didn't care. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not here for that person. Yeah. I'm here for me, right? And because I wasn't like, oh, you know, is it, something off right now, right? Well, you were like, just I, dialed into like your mission, right? But and everything, why you were there, yeah. everything, like even in Verve. Mm -hmm. People like at that time too. This is a scam. What are you doing? They, they start with us. A couple yeah. months later, they fall off. They fall off. But I don't blame people. I, I'm saying. Again, like, it's not, this lifestyle is not a lifestyle everybody should have. Everybody should get tuned into, in my opinion, I'm saying everybody should. Whoa, whoa, people, whoa. People FYI. should get into their opinions about, like, what they want to do with their time. Yeah. Right? Going back. If you want to be that nine to five person, do it. And nobody can tell you, us can't tell you otherwise. If you want to work 12 hours a day and, and work six days a week and feel like this brings me purpose, amazing. Yeah. My thing is like, I want you to challenge yourself to think, is this really serving me? Is this really making me happy? And when you ask those questions, it's a different quality of question, yeah. you start to look at the things in your life different. Yeah. Like when I started journaling, like what makes me happy, 
like and getting deep into that and like it, does this actually make me happy does this relationship with this person actually serve value to me you know friends and stuff and business connections does this actually make me happy me doing this for work does it actually make me happy um, me renting everywhere I'm living just so I could appear to have like a dope place. <laughs> Bro, that was a big, big part of my life. My man. Renting places that are ridiculously expensive. My man. And this trying is the, to flex this lifestyle. The journey of the salesman. You're always going to make more next year. Yeah. yeah. So, and that was the mindset. So, oh, I'll justify it. I'll justify it. And I did. But looking back on it again, I don't regret it. However, it's just like no regrets. Uh, however, it's just like I feel like when you don't ask yourself the tough questions, yeah. your life gets put on autopilot yeah. and the danger is if you're running on fucking max and it's on autopilot after yeah. a while there's no gas left yeah. and i feel like that's what happened to me yeah. i moved from ontario to bc alberta bc ended up saskatchewan. in saskatchewan <laughs> and it was in saskatchewan for me maybe it was the weather I, I don't know but that's where i felt like the tank just emptied mm. and i'm like you know what man i, I gotta get back in tune with what makes me happy yeah. right not just yeah. what looks good on my resume or what the amount of money I could be making yeah. one day, eventually, the career, because I was so caught up in that, yeah. right? Like the, the status of things as opposed to, man, recently it's all just been like, what serves me? What actually makes me happy? And, and I think a lot of people I talk to don't ask themselves these kind of questions. And I feel like, again, it just leads to your life being on autopilot. And then one day when you're 50, you're retired, 70, you're retired, or one day you wake up and, and your wife leaves you. Yeah. right or your husband leaves you shit just isn't you don't have the relationship with your kids that you're looking for like you really need to analyze everything in your life and just ask yourself is this serving me what can i improve upon this yeah. and that, that's what i mean when i say journaling i don't mean like you're out here just writing down like your feelings like you know grade yeah, yeah, six yeah. type thing i mean, I mean, I mean auditing your cool. life yeah auditing your life and breaking down the different sectors well i think it's first finding out what you even want in life yeah you know? like yeah, i think you got to get very clear on what do I, like the way I kind of live. So if, if I look at my journey, you know, back when COVID happened, I go, okay, so I'm living a life, I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of. Mm. You know, I, I think I've, I've done great things, but I've, I kind of hit like a threshold. I mean, this is me. I feel like every two and a half years, I kind of hit my threshold. Like Verve was about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Like Core was about yeah, two and like a half years. Yeah, like these periods of time Coach for work. Was about, it was about two and a half years. Yeah. What I'm in right now, I, I don't think it's two and a half years, but I'm, I, I'm going to be like, what can I do next after this, right? Yeah. How do I evolve it? How do I evolve, right? Yeah. So I kind of hit that two and a half year mark or, or more. And, you know, um, life was great. You know, I, I bought my first home. I had the girl, had the, had the nice car, had the, wearing the suit every single day. You had the stuff. I had the stuff, right? And, um, and then I go, this is not what I expected, nor mm -hmm. this is what I want. And then I had that conversation with myself, I think kind of what you're talking about, which is what do I want in life? What is going to actually serve me and what is yeah. going to actually make me happy in the mornings and happy throughout the day? Yeah. And, and what I did, and, I, and as a viewer, if you're, if you're listening, one thing I recommend everyone do is start writing a book on your life. I mean, you should know yourself inside and out. You know, at the end of the day, like my life is a movie. Everyone's life is a movie here, right? So I was doing that when COVID hit because obviously I wasn't working at that time. And I, was, I was in the basement and I was writing and I was like finding, you know, who I was through the writing. Mm -hmm. And then I realized um, that's how I found out I want to do something with stuttering. Because mm. every decision I did was to overcome it. So then I, I was like, so what do I want? Well, maybe to try to become an author. Mm. Try, to, try to do something like that because that's what I want. You were looking at the different things. Yeah. And yeah. then I realized I'm like, cool. Well, one thing I want to do is I want to be able to work online. I know it's most people fail at that. Yeah. Cool. So what the do I got to do? Lifestyle. Right? Yeah. I mean, and honestly, it's so bullshit. The the, the laptop lifestyle. It, like the idea of you on a beach with a laptop. Like do you guys, do you guys even understand? Like having a MacBook on a on a beach. Like it gets hot. Like it stops working after twenty minutes. <laughs> this guy's talking about the practice. <laughs> like it, like it's it's such a BS mindset. Like it's. Most people out there are selling a dream, right? Like they're selling you to either join their business opportunity, quit your nine to five job, come work over here. So I get that, I get that, I get that. Um, and I made it happen, but I'll be honest, like what, what works for me is, and I don't want to get off topic, but just to ex explain this, like I'm up by 5.45, I hit the gym, I got the same trainer, I come home, I got my morning meetings, I write yep. down my goals, 
you know, I have my 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 desk, I have my little plant, I have my bookshelf, I have my ring up. light, everything set up. You and had then, to mention the ring light. I had so I can see my pretty face. Um, so, because it's a foundation for me, it grounds me. And then I, 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 I have my, the same old lunch every single day, as my nonna would say, chicken and salad again, chicken and salad. Right. Um, so I do that same thing over and over, and that's what works for me, and that's, that's what actually makes me happy. But going back to it, it's like, what do you want in life? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I don't want to be outside, you know, always, right? I want to be able to, to create this lifestyle working at home. I want to be able to be my own boss, and I know that mm -hmm. comes with responsibility. A ton. I know that comes with, like now I have a team, like I have payroll. Like if I don't, for example, hit quote on our, our targets or whatever, like I'm gonna have very angry people. You after, gotta right? manage cash flow, yeah. I, I gotta manage all of it. I gotta manage that they're yeah. doing the right thing. I gotta manage that p clients are happy. Like, I, I, like I'm like i running an actual organization. Yeah, there's a lot so, of responsibility. A lot that. of responsibility. Yeah. Like it's, it, I wouldn't say I'm working harder, it's just a different type of thought process. Like I'm always, yeah. hey, is this person happy? Hey, how can I do that better? Hey, how can I make this better, right? But then I was like, so what do I want? And then I, I got very firm on it. And once you find out what you want, and this is where I think a lot of people fuck up, they go, this is what I want, and let me um, find a way to get there. Let me find someone who has, let me model the same behavior, and then let me go all in. And let me not You think most let people do that? Away. No, I'm saying most oh, people don't do this. I was this. gonna say, I'm okay. Most people don't do this, where it's like, this is what I'm doing, and I got no other option. Mm. Um, and yeah, that's um, it's kind of what's worked for me, and I think that's where happiness kind of lies. You, 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 and I think that's kind of what happened to you. You kind of like, this is what I want. I don't want to be in Saskatchewan right now. Yeah, I, like, I was. I don't want to be in Saskatchewan. Yeah, I was just chasing career metrics, things that you know looked good, things that I thought I'd feel better, you know, if I accomplished these things. And I think that, again, being honest with yourself, having those real conversations with yourself, yeah. uh, the real talk is identifying those different areas and then clearly identifying what you want yeah. and for some people it's, it's not going to be going all in in something right yeah. for some people it's they want the balance right with their time or they want this and for some people it's i want it all right i really want to experience like what life has to offer and i think uh at the end of the day man like it just it really comes down to doing things that make you happy yeah. um, not just work wise yeah. i'm just talking about your career i'm just talking overall yeah. like i know for me football's a Football makes me happy, oh, man. man. Like it's, I enjoy watching it, right? Uh, exercise, yeah. And there's been periods of my life where I've sacrificed those things because I thought they weren't important, and then over time that chips away, chips away, chips away, and then you're left with a shell of yourself. Yeah. And I've experienced that where it's like, who am I anymore? What, like, what do I actually enjoy doing anymore? And I just lost touch with it because I was so all in on what I thought was going to lead to happiness and success. Mm -hmm. And then once you attain these things, it's like, man, does it really? Why is there like two mature men having mature conversations over here? <laughs> Look how mature we are right now. It's it's uh, it's crazy, man. Come Craziness. A yeah, come a long way. And we're just getting started. Um, so I got uh, I got I got some. Um, I want to throw words at you, and then I want to see your response to it. Also, a very very. Um, uh, Question that's 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 that was asked of me to ask you many times. Um, it's a very serious question. Um, morning routine. What is your morning routine? Oh, don't, <laughs> don't get me started. I hate the reason Daniel's laughing about this is because I, I get asked this a lot. Like it's such a cheesy, freaking personal development thing. Like, what's your morning routine? As if that is the thing that sets up a successful life. It's like I'm gonna be honest. You wake up at 5:45. Yeah. I wake up at 8 o'clock. Like because my lifestyle. <laughs> it's set a different up that lifestyle. Way. Yeah. Like I used to wake up at four. Yeah. Your, your morning routine doesn't really like it doesn't need. Yeah. Some people like you operate incredible with structure. Yes. I operate well with a sustained amount of structure. Yeah. I, I think it's all. Yeah, it's funny you bring that up. I just think it's all like preference, yeah. and you need to do the things that set you up for a good day. Yeah. Working out sets me up for a good day. Journaling sets me up for a good day. So yeah. But is that going to work for everybody? Yeah. So that's why I think the whole industry of self-help just takes it so out of context. Right? Oh, man, like, dude. You have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. It's like, fuck off. Do, do what you're, makes you You're going to have a lot of haters, man. So Good. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> just, just, yeah. Okay. Um, take on Canada right now. What's, what's your take on it? 
That's a vague. That's, vague. <laughs> that's vague. Uh, um, Okay, specifically. It's a great country. Specifically, Ontario. Just we're just gonna have that raw conversation. Yeah. Too bad. What's your take on how effed up? I mean, how great? I mean, what what what's going on right now? I think Canada is actually an exceptional country. Like, when you're 16, you're not shipped off to the military. Like, you don't. You're not forced to do things with your career. There's a lot of freedom. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I'm not a massive fan of of the leader of the country currently. I, I don't. But again, I don't know the answers. Like, yeah. there's people who act like, oh, if I was in that person, no, you don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just. I'm not a fan of everything going on um, yeah. in terms of COVID, the way shit's being handled. Yeah. But again, I'm not a sci. I don't know all the science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I just yeah. know I, I. I got it, and I. It, it felt like the flu. I feel like majority of us have gotten it. Like, yeah, it is. But I, I think overall. The, the Canada's actually an epic country. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of America. I, like, I do like certain states America? in America. America. Uh, like, I think California is actually pretty cool yeah. weather wise, but it's kind of like Canada I in terms go to of Florida. political. I would go to Florida. Florida, Texas. Yeah, there's yeah, definitely. Yeah. But overall, I think Canada is actually pretty epic. Yeah, I, I think, um, like, I'm at a position right now, like, it doesn't matter to me. Like, if people shut down and stuff, like, I'm fine. Like, I literally built my business during. COVID. COVID. Like yeah. mine, I literally tell this to all my clients. Like I built a COVID, um, COVID free, friendly business. COVID yeah. friendly business. Yeah. Like no matter what happens, yeah. we're still in business. Yeah. So you don't know the gym that if the restrictions yeah. get. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and nor do I want to get extremely political. Um, but I think what this period has done is it's really opened up a lot of our eyes of like, Without it's doubt. almost like, is this what we want? Yeah, like, doubt. like, you know, I'm going to be on, I'm going to be in Ontario for the next year. Um, but at the end of the day, like, I don't know, as I get older, it's like, just because I'm born here, doesn't mean I have to be here forever. And I know no. this like goes against like what we're talking about initially. Like I want to be in your family and but roots. It doesn't though, because you can still <laughs> spend time here. Yeah. Before sure. it was like, yo, I just gotta, just gotta work hard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is like, man, if you want to live in Florida, cause you want to live in Florida yeah. and come visit Ontario and spend yes. that time with family. It's, that's a completely different yeah. thing. Yeah. So, but I think what this period has done, I, our generation specifically, um, I think it's opened up a lot of our eyes, like just Without traveling, doubt. leaving Without the country, doubt. Hawaii, my man. Yeah. Um, and just looking at, okay, so this is, you know, what is, what is the quote? Like 95% of people, you know, uh, die in a 25 mile, a 25 mile radius of where they were born, mm. whatever that quote is. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. like I, I think, I think it's like, I don't know about you, but I've, I've, I've learned about politics more and like I've, I've had to understand like who dictates my decisions of whether I could go to a gym or not, you know? So, um, nor do I want to get political here, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely an interesting time. It's listen, I'd rather go through this than be in world war II in 1939 with 1937. Sign me up for this era Yeah. and me not going to Berlin or uh, uh, what's that? What's that beach? Beach of Normandy, like yeah. you know, where? Because me and you, we you better believe we were the guys in the boats. Like, let's get it, boys. Let's get it, boys. Like no, no, no. Right. You're, I'm the guy in the front. Like, it is what it is. Yeah. If I get shot first, uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> said and done. Yeah. but yeah, no, like, I like, I'm grateful at that level. Like, I'm I, listen. I'm I'm grateful I can be able to do what I've done. Yeah. So, so I don't I don't hate on it, but I know a lot of people have suffered health wise, but also, you know, the single mother who can't get a job and she can't, you know, um, she's having a hard time feed her kids, right? Like, I just, so there's, there's, there's both angles of it. I think just to wrap up the COVID politics thing, I think the, I the mental health yeah. side of it is substantially more detrimental. Yeah. And I don't think it's talked about. And that's political. Yeah. Because a lot yeah. of people would say, no, 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 no. It, what's, what's more important is a 65 year old with underlying conditions. Uh, that is substantially important. I'm just saying I think it's been overlooked that, hey, if you shut down gyms, if you shut down people's place of business and they can't work and they can't provide for their family, yeah. I think that has personally more of an impact on society yeah. than a, a virus yeah. that goes around. It does kill people with, so, without a doubt. So I'm going to ask you a big question. Do you think Florida did it right? I don't, it's, it's tough to say. I'm trying to put you yeah, in the spot, buddy. Okay, okay. To too say. bad, too bad, too bad. I've been, I've been PR trained. You know, <laughs> the answers. Um, another question. Number one, number one reason why people fail. I think they listen to the wrong people, hmm. right? Like I think if you want, for example, if success to you is getting fit, yeah. you have to listen to the right people that are going to help you do that. 
if you're listening to all your buddies who are not fit yeah. on how to get fit, it's almost impossible to do. So I think that you need to uh, study people who have what you want and have been where you are. I, th I think without a doubt, that has been our it's a law. It's that a has law. been our rule of thumb since we were 19. Dude, I've probably taught that concept at least f yeah. thousands of times. Ridiculous amount. Right. So I, but I think that's it. I think that is the number one reason that somebody succeeds or fails in something yeah. is if you listen to the right people, yeah. are you guaranteed to succeed? Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> right? But if you listen to the wrong people, you're guaranteed to fail. Like they're without a doubt. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and I think what, what, whatever age you're at right now, you know, if you're 21 years old, like you have a good sized team right now. Yeah. And I think they're very blessed to, to be, and I don't, I say that, I don't, don't say that in like a, a bad way, but like they're blessed to be like in your presence, to be around your energy, to be, <laughs> sounds yeah. so bad. You're blessed not, I, 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 the I only word I thought was like was presence. Yeah. But they're, they're, listen, at 21, at 20, at 19, when you're fucking lost during these days. To be influenced. Even 24, to be yeah. influenced. Yeah. So I think who do you listen to? I think once you find that person, then you stick at it. Yeah. You stick at it and then you, and then you follow that leader for the most part, um, yeah. so you can learn the skill inside and out. In, in the side note, in this section that you want to learn them from. Yes. Right? Like Not everything. That's the thing where we struggled with. I mean. You set a person like, yeah, this guy has what I want in the career or whatever, money. Yeah. And then you listen to absolutely everything they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Like, without a doubt, I feel like you should have multiple people. Well, what, there's actually, with that law, there's a deeper thing. You listen to yourself. Initially, you only listen to yourself. Yeah. Like, you take counsel from, other, from people. other people like we don't know what the hell we're talking about too like we're given what our life experience mm -hmm. is and what's worked for us our perspective our perspective yeah. have we have we accomplished certain things that we're both proud of of course yeah. have you know have we gone against the odds of course um have we done things that most people you know and i, I say that like not to be like look at us right but sure um it's been cool it, it, it's been a, it's been a cool life, but um, at the end of the day, you listen to yourself. Yeah. Like you don't listen. Nobody like, nobody can tell you what's no. right or wrong. For like you. if you want to quit a job, you quit a job. If you want to, you know, um, start your own spend business. money here. Yeah. Like you yeah. do that. Yeah. You know, if you want to drop out of school, you drop out of school. Yeah. Like you ultimately, and I've realized that with happiness, you want to be happy, dude. You follow what you want to do. Yeah. Because, I think there's so many people out there like that are just fucking miserable and they're 42 years old and they've gone down this path they got it, and they 42. got it just specifically all the 42 year olds right yeah. but no like 42 like they get into the Any 40s age, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah like get older but i'm saying like but they've made these decisions but they can't leave those decisions mm -hmm. like i'm in a place right now where i don't have kids so i'm very mobile for the most part yeah but life would be different if i got kids but, yeah i mean I, I do got a cute little doggy um i might have my doggy in the next episode but um um, if dogs are allowed here, dogs are allowed yeah. here. I know what you mean though. Yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's, you have to go all in. You have to have that mindset and, and listen to the right people. But if you listen to everything somebody says and, yeah. and you aren't listening to yourself, like if you tell me something, right? If you're fit and I want to get fit and I'm listening yeah. to you, but you tell me something that I actually internally think is not correct and I disagree yeah. with it, not out of ego, just out of it doesn't feel right. You should listen to that feeling. For sure. That, that's what we're, For sure. we're trying to say here. But at the, at the end of the day, if you're doing something and the results are horrible, you should also, but that's Be initially, that's the journaling. Yeah. I'm doing something wrong here. Yeah. But working out for three years, it, it my body working. hasn't changed. Yeah. Okay, like, then you got to get rid of the ego and maybe stop listening to yourself so much and maybe you got to break some beliefs. Yeah, without a doubt. All right, I got a few more questions to go. Let's get um, it. Um, living the good life. Okay, actually, actually, I got a question before. Favorite artist and why? Drake, why? <laughs> he already knows the answer. Um, yeah, I, I would honestly say Drake's my number one favorite artist. Um, yeah, we like idolize him in, uh, in Canada. You know, yeah, he's definitely a massive celebrity in Canada. Um, I think just he makes incredible music without yeah. bias. Like the numbers speak for themselves. But I just think um, some of it is not relatable at all. Right? He's talking about like a Ferrari that costs $2 million. Like, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> but I think that uh, it's deeper than just money. Like, yeah. he makes music that you connect with emotionally. Yeah. He's pretty vulnerable in his music. Um, so, yeah, to answer that, I definitely think he is my favorite artist. He's definitely who I listen to the most. Dude, I, I, I tear up whenever I listen to Drake. Like, yeah. dude, I, 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 I like... And drive. I like listen to him. Like, this guy's... This guy was, like, from Toronto. Yeah. And, like, now... It's inspiring. It's inspiring. Yeah. I'm like, damn... And then he's like, he'll write bars from like Take Care album, and I and I re-listen to that song. And I'm like, 
Damn, bro. I, was, I, I didn't even talking, catch this. I was talking to my buddy last night. Um, Drake's music gets better with time. Yeah, it's like a fine wine. Yeah, like it, it actually, there's not a lot of artists that do. Some artists, you listen to their old student, you're like, oh, I'm happy that they've evolved. Evolved, yeah. Uh, but certain artists like Drake, even though we, I love The Weeknd's old stuff and his new stuff, like I feel like certain yeah. artists with time, you just appreciate their now, music more. Now, I, I asked this question, like, we're Canadians, but like, I mean, the truth is a lot of Canadians run even like the top billboards, like Drake, The Weeknd, Justin Bieber, Bieber yeah. um, there's a lot of talent Tory Lanez, Canada, yeah. or is it just like a Canadian thing? No, like if I if I said that in New York, would they be like, "No, nah, man, Pop Smoke is number one"? Probably, but the states have more people yeah. that have blown up in the music industry. Canada has fewer. I just think Canada's impact ha has been pretty substantial. Yeah. Not bigger than America. America's had like legends come out of there, but I think Canada has developed a lot of talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To answer your, your question yeah, about my favorite artist that yeah. you already knew the answer to. Yeah, yeah. No, I just I, I want to hear it. Yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, Dude, even, <laughs> it might be funny, like, even listening to, like, Drake at times is some form of personal development. <laughs> like, you're like, listen to some bars, you're like, dude, like, you're lying to you me? Thinking. What was that big line, uh, that big, um, big Sean line of, I might go vegan? <laughs> oh, how that impacted me, though, yeah. And I guarantee like, that impact. A couple years to my life, I might go <laughs> vegan. Yeah. That wasn't the reason I went vegan. Sure, but sure, I, sure, I sure, sure. But it had an impact. <laughs> Um, okay, when I say living the good life, what does that mean to you? Freedom. Freedom! Yeah, you're really taking it American. <laughs> uh, yeah, just freedom overall. Time freedom, money freedom, yeah. doing what you want, when you want, how you want, with who you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, going back to our roots. Like, I, I just think that is the good life. Being yeah. able to actually do what you want. Not just money, your time. Like, hey, I want to go to Mexico. Awesome, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Right, like having that degree of freedom, and it doesn't matter what it costs, or within, a, you know, like you're not like find the cheapest place. Yeah, and freedom ties down everything, man. Like at a restaurant, looking at the menu, what do I want versus what can I afford? Yeah, right. Left to right or right to left. Yeah, right. Looking at the menu versus looking at the price, yeah. that's freedom, a degree of freedom. And I think that is the ultimate goal in life is just getting to a stage and a point where it's complete, because we've definitely both experienced that in small degrees and in large degrees. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot more to come for that. Yeah, freedom is uh, freedom is big, man. Yeah, freedom is like literally living however you want to live. Life on your terms. Like if I want to record a podcast on a Thursday, I'm gonna do yeah. it. Yeah. Like that's yeah. it's like doing whatever I want, right? A thousand percent. But there's obviously planning. We we, we got to plan it. They can't just be like we're, we're we're doing this date. Show up. Yeah. And then no one shows up. So obviously, you know, it's not exactly the same. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, re regrets. No, I'm kidding. I already asked, I already asked that question. Um, advice to your 18 year old self, keep it simple. Um, it's tough. You know what I would tell Andrew right now would tell 18 year old Andrew to do exactly what you My man. Doing. I would tell him to do that. Holy do everything, smokes. Because again, I don't regret any of it. I'll just Damn. say, do exactly what you plan on doing. That's yeah. what, that's what I would tell my 18 year old self. Yeah. Well, would I tell another 18 year old kid maybe different? Yeah. But myself, I would say just do exactly. <laughs> just trust what you. Doing. Yeah. Trust you. Just, because I know what happened. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. I'm yeah. ahead in the book. Yeah. yeah I could look yeah. back to chapter one and be like, hey, if you just keep doing it, you're yeah. writing the story that led to who you are today. Do you care about leaving a legacy anymore? Not to the degree I thought I did. Dude, like, and and for the for the viewer, one of the biggest things that we used to live by is like, I want to create something where it lasts for lifetimes mm -hmm. upon lifetimes upon lifetimes. And I really bought into that. And I think there's, there's an aspect to that too, right? Like if I can make a change in the speech world that literally changes textbooks mm -hmm. and changes the way things are taught. There's a ton of power to that. You know, it's like, uh, I think from what I, I remember when Tony Robbins came out, they hated him. Mm -hmm. And now psychologists, they, they have to, it's part of their curriculum to listen to some type of wow. Tony Robbins. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, so, that, I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. I just, I don't care. As honestly, and I know it's kind of like blunt. I just don't, for myself, it, yeah. I think human nature, you want to continue to survive. That's why people have children. It's a form of uh, procreation. You're, yeah, yeah. you're continuing your genes. Um, just for me, I'm just, I'm at a stage currently, maybe if you ask me in five years, it'll be different, but I'm at a stage currently where I don't care about when I'm dead, if people are going to remember Andrew Kaspiris. Yeah, like I don't, I'm Greek. I have a massive Kaspiris family. The Kaspiris name will live on. Like it's not all dependent on me. Um, got a ton of, of family, you know, like that's not my concern. 
And I just think uh, some people have that and it's ego. It's not that they want to impact the world. So it's no kids. fucking ego. No kids? I don't, right now I'm going to say My no. man. Because he does in 10 years and I have four, you know. Oh, God. Yeah. So funny. If you have any questions for me, always ask. Absolutely. Um, craziest door-to-door -door moment. Oh, man. I would say it's not even a bad one. Um, I was in Kelowna, I think it was, Kelowna, British Columbia, and uh, it was knocking during, like, Thanksgiving time. And I, like, knocked on this door, sold this guy, and he invited me in. He's like, why don't you, are you hungry? And I'm like, yeah, I haven't ate. And then he invited me in for Thanksgiving dinner. And, like, That's awesome. Like, I, like a sit-down Thanksgiving dinner. Not like, oh, we got some leftovers, like have them. Like I actually got to experience a Thanksgiving dinner with a family. And like, so wild, I was a complete stranger at their door. Yeah. Like if you just think about yeah. just looking at that, like that they trusted me enough to like come in the house, sit yeah. down, have food. That wouldn't you know happen in Scarborough. I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would not happen in North York, in Markham. You? What's your most wild door to door? Well, it, well even just to add on to that, it's, I'd love to be seen knocking. Yeah. Dude, like we met some great people. It's different. It's whole even even Alberta. It's just it's just a different vibe. Right? Yeah. Nothing like, dude. I, I've seen it all. Like I've seen, um, like I'm like on the phone, putting through a, a a deal, and I'm holding a newborn baby. That was just, that's just h hilarious. Yeah. Like I don't know why I'm even here right now. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody uh, trusting you enough to like. Yeah. Hey, or like or like kid? doing homework with the kids while yeah. the while the parents are choosing. Uh, TV channels. That's why sales is beautiful, though. Like, yeah. Building those relationships. Everything. I mean, I've seen like it's it's too, uh, it's it's eighteen plus. But I mean, like they've. I'm. I, I was talking to these two ladies, and I and I had a trainee, and and uh, I'm obviously I'm presenting to the girl that owns the home, and then her friend shows me this picture, this very like, is the word erotic, and she's like, uh, she's, and, I'm, and and she's showing it to me with my trainee, yeah, like, and she's like, and she's like, what do you think about this? And I'm yeah. like, what the fuck am I looking yeah, at? Yeah, some of the people out there. It's like I just got in here 10, 15 minutes ago. Yeah. Is this is, is, is this is this what you normally do? Yeah. And like you know, like it's just it, it's it's cool, man, because we've met so many people. Um, the frequency. Yeah, it's and nice. even like even like great 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 people too. Yeah. Um, it's it's a skill that I believe if if you're watching this uh, now and you struggle with communication, I'd highly recommend some form of door to door, some form of public speaking or sales like, overall. Like to me, it's like the problem with the speech industry, in my opinion, is it's all focused on like one on one therapy. It's mm -hmm. you know, it's like. You have anxiety because something happened in your childhood or in speech therapy. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Try this breathing technique. It's all focused on the speech. To me, you want to overcome something? Dude, do, do, go get rejected. You get out there. Go do a public, do, go give a, a talk to 10 people and embarrass the fuck out of yourself. Go knock a door and have someone yell in your face and slam the door in your face and then move to the next door. You do that for enough periods of time, like that's how I overcame my depression. Bro, yeah. I was depressed. Yeah. I would get up and I would just, why am I alive right now? It's yeah. like thinking about that actually is pretty ridiculous. Like I, I remember being at Brock and I would be so depressed. Mm -hmm. I'd wake up at eight o'clock and I'd be looking at the ceiling like, what am I doing with my life? Bro, I call my mom at 3 a.m. saying, why am I even alive? Like it's yeah. fucked up. How far, you how far I've come. Die. But it's, it's, it's crazy, man. It's, yeah. it's crazy. So. To all my people, if you struggle with speech, if you struggle with communicating, I would highly recommend some type of door-to-door, -door, some type of public speaking, some type of and I'm, I'm hiring. phone. I'm hiring. And this guy's hiring. People, so. so if you're in the Ontario area or if yeah. you're in the, what, what would you call All across this? Canada. We're hiring everyone. All, all across Canada. Let me know. You can DM me. And uh, we'll actually tag Andrew's uh, Instagram, I guess. Sure. Yeah. TikTok as well. <laughs> um, TikTok. Uh, last, uh, you know, last question before I have the words. Next five years, what does the next five years look like for you? A lot of work, like that I'm still doing um, in terms of career, but not to the extent where I, where I exhaust myself. And then just real estate. Um, that's really what I want to invest my money in. Yeah. Uh, fortunate enough to get my first place. You bought my first. You place. bought your first yeah, place. Yeah, oh my yeah. goodness! I already knew this, but yeah. I'm just I gonna act surprised. But I feel like. It's and and you move in when? Next week. Oh right. my God! Yeah. Wow! Yeah. I didn't know any of this? But get get I, the champagne out. Yeah. We get like a whole bend. But it's the, the reason I just real estate provides freedom, right? People who own a lot of real estate can have a lot of freedom in their life. So I think my next five years, I'm just gonna go hard 
uh, like stashing away money and then just continuing to invest in it? Well, this is the problem with salespeople. If you're a salesperson, even even entrepreneurs, they know how to make money, but and but they know turning how to spend it. and they know how to spend it. Yeah. It's like you're and, and this this is the number one problem with salespeople. They make eighty, but they spend a hundred. Yeah. They make what two sixty, and then they spend what? Yeah, more than that. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, then, and then it's and then it's always like I'm gonna make five hundred next year, yeah. and then you hit five hundred, and then okay, we spend six hundred, and then it's this, and then you're then you're in trouble with the fucking tax man, yeah. and then it's, it becomes this like treacherous cycle, and then yeah, like uh, it's it's crazy. Like when we first started, it was like okay, can we actually make money doing this? Yeah. Then it's like you gotta like you you've created this ego, and now it's. You got to like show off to all these people. Yeah. You got to get the nicer car, the nicer vacation, the nicer X, Y, and Z. So, mm, it's nice. we uh, to to add to your point, I, I really think, and I like how the Grant Cardone approach is like just go broke, like make all yeah. this money. And don't I think, keep it in your bank well. That's account. that's that's kind of what you do. I don't uh, you, you don't have to give numbers, but you basically took a good chunk of your bank account and you just threw it into yeah. <laughs> massive chunk of it. Like I keep like myself. You're, you're broke again. My personal bank account almost never has money in it. Because I, I don't want to look at it and think I'm good. You know what I mean? If I see 20 grand, 50 grand, all this money in my bank account, yeah. I, personally, I let off the gas a little. So I keep my personal bank account as broke as I humanly can to make sure I'm still paying for stuff and then just store it all in a business account. Well, because at the end of the day, we're producers. Like, we're, like we're hunters. Yeah. So you put our back against the wall, like, we figure shit out. Yeah, if you have no money, you have to make money. But yeah. if you feel like you have a lot of money, it's like... You don't have that necessity. I know, so I know, dude. I agree I know. with that. Yeah. No, like, but like, we operate better like that. And yeah. I'm like, because I got, I got money in the account. I'm just like, I don't even want to have it there. Mm -hmm. Move it. Put it somewhere you can't touch. <laughs> like, I want to be like, here, hold it. Yeah. You know. So, um, yeah. yeah. Crazy. That's why I think real estate's huge because you dump all that into something, and then it's not even there anymore. It's not in an account anymore. Yes, you own something, but it's no longer an account. Yeah. Right. So for me, it's and, yeah. motivating as well. And then you put it on your credit card. You see your credit card bill going up, and you're like, okay, I gotta worry, make more. So I can yeah. <laughs> okay, I got I got a, a few words, and then uh, we'll wrap up. Perfect. Um, so I'm gonna throw words at you. You tell me what comes to mind, okay. and I'm I'll, I'll, I might get my two cents too. Sure. Um, friendship. Real connection. That's what I think of, like real, not just like uh, conditional friends, like people who are friends with you if you do this or if you work here. Real, like no matter what, no matter where we live, there's a real connection there. Yeah. How about you? Um, trust, mm. loyalty, consistency. Mm. I would say consistency. Yeah. I think like to earn my friendship, you got to be consistent for a while. Yeah, not just yeah. You know? Hang out one time and. Yeah, yeah. like you got to. It's like, I think I've trusted a lot of people throughout the years, and they're great initially, and then it's like, yeah, you. And I say that in a positive way, like you can't keep up. Mm. Like you've 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 kept up with me, bro, and I've and I've kept up with you. Yeah. Like we have like this relationship you where, talking, yeah. like we have a natural relationship where like we're competitive, but in like a healthy way, you know. Yeah, it's like I, I want to win, but I also want to see you win. Yeah, yeah, and I want to outdo you, and then you want to outdo me, and then yeah. it becomes this thing. Like we have a bet. The beginning of the year that we're not going to say but yeah. you know yeah having those things i think is important <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so to me loyalty yeah. loyalty consistency um you know and um yeah like and a great fucking attitude mm -hmm. dude i like i've literally like what i love about you guys um is um you got great energy guys like you guys are bomb like you guys you guys came in here and and that matters to me because to create the mastermind effect there has to be like this level of i vibe with these guys mm -hmm. so um so that is that is it and then everyone's on the grind yeah like i've had friends where it's like what are you doing oh you know or, or that's not or similar to you no that's why no um, yeah sure 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 so yeah. on my level mm -hmm. right um and then yeah so oh, yeah. yeah okay question uh next word when i say the word expensive what comes to mind Expensive. Uh, I don't know why, but America. I, I, I don't know why that, that came to my mind. I just feel like, and it's funny because a lot of things in America aren't actually more expensive. I think just the dollar conversion, honestly, is what, that's probably what prompted that. I know it's a random ass. So Euro is the, Euro is the fucking know. Yeah, that's what, that's what came to my mind. Freedom. What comes to my mind when I think of freedom? <laughs> Um, I think of the American flag. <laughs> freedom is the only way, brother. You know what? I actually think of time. Uh, just being able to do what I want with my time. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah, that's happiness, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> patience. Cheesy, but a virtue. Like I genuinely like having that, like understanding, like with fitness even, it's not going to happen immediately, no matter what. You, you have to invest time. If real things take time. Yeah. So I think patience is one of the most understated things that somebody could have. Okay, Gary Vee. Um, I don't think that guy's patient. <laughs> <laughs> he talks about patience all the yeah. time. Okay, uh, Doug Ford. No comment. <laughs> oh, no fucking comment. <laughs> Justin Trudeau. No, no comment. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, envy. Envy? Uh, the negative. Like I, comparing yourselves to others is one of the fastest ways to be miserable. It's like being envious of other people. Everybody's on their own journey. Yeah. There's kids who are 19 years old who earn a hell of a lot more than me and have their own businesses. Great. Yeah. If I start comparing, oh, I'm 26, I should be here, yeah. you get miserable. So I think that's envy, is just comparing yourself to other people. Jealousy. Same thing. It's envy and jealousy, like, I think by definition are pretty similar. Yeah. And just comparison. Haters. I think uh, they're going to happen yeah. the bigger, the more attention you get. Right? Like I'm pretty under the radar now. I used to post everything about my life on social media and with that came haters. Yeah. Uh, and recently in my life, I've just been trying to live under the radar. Yeah. Not because to avoid hate. Yeah, yeah. It's I not just, like you're doing worse in life. Yeah, it's just, man, I, I don't feel the need to flex yeah. when I used to feel like the need to flex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I feel like that was an inauthentic version of myself, yeah, which created that haters. That wasn't who you were. So I just think uh, haters are inevitable when you do yeah. blow up and get a lot of attention. Yeah. Um, and they're not a bad thing. Not everybody's gonna love you. Yeah, and, and not, to, not to challenge you on that, like I post a lot, but I'm being authentically mean. I'm talking about yeah. an insecurity, right? So. And it's, it's also your business. It's also my business, right? You know so what I mean? uh, you're, like, you didn't have to do that. You didn't have to show, like, would you have like, there's videos of you with a wad of cash? Yeah, cash. now like, cause Instagram and Snapchat will remind you like two years ago today, three years ago today. And I look at some of the videos I posted and I'm like, I was such a douchebag. <laughs> Such a douchebag. I, I have a tie. I, I can I, see some people watching like... Yep. Yeah, they're like, yeah, I watch those stories. Man, I'd, I'd go to Harry Rosen and get these nice ties and literally post like that they're made in Italy. And, and I'm like, looking back, maybe I, I don't regret things. Regrets? Like, yeah, it's like, man, why did I do that? So There we go. Yeah. yeah. Think of. Ridiculous. It's Ridiculous, man. Wow. I, I think, uh, yeah. Again, the competitive nature to see. It's like the Jones effect. Mm -hmm. It's like someone else is doing that, so mm -hmm. then I want to do it too. Yeah, I was just flexing and it's stupid. Stupid. So now I don't. Stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, lifting weight. For me, what comes to my mind is vital. Like, I think it's important for me. The, the periods I've been the happiest in my life, I lift weights. I don't just exercise. Yeah. And, and lifting heavy has been important for me. Um, but everybody's different. Some people are runners and, like, they operate I'm just well talking about running. you, my man. With me, a thousand percent vital. Vital. That's what comes That's to mind. That's it. That's yeah. it, dude. You're like, you're like, uh, you want to talk about everybody. I'm a peace, love, and positivity. <laughs> um, team culture. Uh, also vital. Yes. That comes to mind. I just think positivity, mm. right? Like I learned this in door to door. Negativity goes up, positivity goes down and sideways. So like what that means in the business world is like any negativity you have, stuff you're struggling with, bring to a manager, bring to a leader, yeah. right? And you only get positivity to your peers and then to people who report to you. And I think that is the most central thing in a culture that the other, like that creates other things, yeah. right? That creates competitiveness in a good way. That creates non-toxic environments, like a yeah. positive workplace. Yeah. Um, so when I think of culture, my mind goes to building a great culture, and that one thing is like the first thing I think of. Yeah, love that, bro. Yeah. Um, love. This guy's getting deep. <laughs> Drake, no. Uh, I don't have any in my heart. <laughs> no, I think love is super crucial and critical, because uh, love is not just in a partner. Right, like I have love for my family, I have love for my real friends. I think love is something that's uh, underlooked because it also ties into like happiness. So that's my that's my uh, my viewpoint on it. Yeah, love is love is funny, man. There's love a lot is, that, there's a lot that comes with love. Love is love is that is a, that is a topic we haven't talked about, and I don't think we will on this on this <laughs> yeah, not on, on this, this episode. episode yeah. That is for the next episode. If yeah. you guys tune in, yeah. we're talking about all about love and it's all the. Love. The goods and the bads that have come with that. Um, but let's just say I'm 
I'm from my end, I'm very grateful for for everything that I've gone through. Yeah. You know? Um yeah. Um overworked. My past. <laughs> that's what I think of. That's what, that's what my mind goes to. Yeah. Past. But how about if, there, if there's someone listening right now and they're like, but I'm working my butt off. Good for you. you and um, what do you want me to do? Just quit my job, buddy? No, nope. I think hard work is important. I just overwork. You shouldn't overwork yourself. You should work hard, thousand percent, but don't overwork yourself. So I think in my past, I overworked myself. How do you not overwork? You plug in with, like, you audit your happiness. Like, you plug in with, like, things you're actually connected to and you enjoy spending time doing. Yeah. And when you do that, it's it's easy, yeah. genuinely. If I can add to that, you know, um, I finished the book Atomic Habits, which I'd highly recommend. I think his name is James Clear. And uh, one of the biggest things he was talking about is systems be system oriented, not goal oriented. So when you're overworked, the system that you've built, which is basically the habits and the routines you've built, mm -hmm. are overworking you. So you have to find a way to change up that yeah. system of what are you doing Monday through Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going hard seven days a week, then you got to change up that system because yeah. we we are habitual. Yeah. So get diversity in the routine. Yeah, like yeah. you know, um, get habitual, and especially to do if you own your own business, if you're a salesperson, if you're a performer, if you're an engineer, it doesn't matter. Like you have to be in the right state of mind. So the systems yeah. put you in the right state of mind. So I think that that's my only two cents on yeah. that. Man, this is, a, this, is a, this is a great podcast so far. Damn, yeah. it's man. It's been cool. I think uh, it's really cool what you're doing, honestly. Like, the, and the idea about having that like real talk, I just yeah. think is critical. Um, and to wrap up, like treating it as like a fly on the wall to a conversation, I think is cool because it gives a different perspective yeah. and, uh, and excited for what's to come. And thank you for having me. Yeah, no, I, uh, I appreciate you. Um, as the audience, I mean, this is really what a podcast is supposed to be about. Like this, sorry, this podcast. It's just having real, genuine, authentic conversations. If we've offended you, we apologize. Um, if you know the the idea with with uh, with this podcast too is we want to entertain you, and we also want to educate you as well. So um, there's many more to come. I'm doing another one next week. Uh, but Andrew, I appreciate you. If there's any last words that you want to uh, leave to the audience, um, yeah, yeah, I, th I think overall, uh, really grateful for the opportunity to do it. I think it's been cool, and looking forward to more of them. Let's get it. Okay. Thank you, everyone.